I'm excited to welcome my next guest, who's the expert of experts on media representation. Soledad O'Brien is an award-winning journalist. She's a documentarian. She's the author and CEO of Soledad O'Brien Productions, which specializes in developing TV and film content that amplifies marginalized voices while exploring social issues like race, class, gender, and identity. She's the host of Matter of Fact with Soledad O'Brien, which is syndicated in virtually every TV market in the country. You can check your local listings for it. And she is an, an old friend and mentor to me. Soledad, it's great to see you. And likewise, Ali, nice to see you as well. I, I want to ask you about um, uh, something that you sa said to Yahoo Finance about black representation in media. You said, I think, quote, I think you see more diversity on camera, but as all of us know, the real power is the person in the meeting that talks about what the direction of the network is going to be. So that's not always the anchor. You, you have a strong held belief that ownership, I don't know if you, you want to say matters more, but certainly matters in this equation. Yeah, and ownership matters a lot. Let's start with Tyler Perry for a moment. You mentioned, right, that he already has 25% of BET+. Plus. Note that he also has eight shows currently on BET. So if Tyler Perry doesn't buy it, somebody's going to have to, who buys it, is going to have to pay Tyler Perry a whole bunch of money if they want to keep his shows, right? This is a certain amount of power and leverage. And that ultimately, I think, is what, what ownership buys you, whether it's ownership of a company, ownership of a platform, ownership of the entire network, ownership of the shows. I think, and I've been doing this a minute, as you pointed out, since the really 1980s when I yep. started working in TV news, a lot of the conversation was about um, putting representation on camera. You know, let's tell stories about people of color in some capacity. And I think those conversations have shifted to what ownership can actually get you, right? To me, I think ownership is about equity. Ownership is about economic freedom. Ownership is about not having to ask permission. Hey, do you think possibly we could put this on TV? Would this be a good idea? It's actually just doing it. And so there are lots of examples where you see the power of ownership day in and day out. Uh, how does this get remedied? If, if we feel that ownership should be better spread out, these are commercial ventures in many cases. Clearly, we've got a lot of very wealthy black people who are uh, interested in this BET deal, so it's quite possible that could, could end up being the case. But how do you think about this generally in the, in the broad spectrum of journalism where we think ownership matters even if you're not talking about race, right? We are just talking about a bad landscape of journalism in some cases in America. How do you remedy these things? I think it's a combination of support and access to capital, which I know over the years you've done a ton of reporting on, right? Without access to capital, and we know women and minorities get far, mm -hmm. far, far less access to capital, it's very hard to build a productive business. In this case, it's interesting, right? We already have BET Plus is at scale. It's, they're not saying, you know, boy, it would be great to build this network and right. then do all these things to get people to come and watch it. So that also makes it a big deal. Uh, you and I both know uh, Roland Martin, who's uh, yeah. a friend of both of ours, right? He's Black Star Network, he started it something like three or four years ago. But the other day, he had on a 45-minute long story about the DOJ in Minneapolis, uh, that report about police abuse. 45 minutes, right, yep. which is not done. Everybody else covered it, a couple minutes here and there. And I think he gets to say with this ownership, hey, this is what I think this show deserves. This is what I think this story deserves for the audience that I serve. But he has to go out and raise money, raise capital in order to be able to do what he's doing. And I think that's really where the stumbling block is. So people often talk about let's support minorities in some capacity. I think some of that support should really be dollars and cents. We're also seeing now, you know, what we used to always call the 600 pound gorilla, right? Which is if you have a company that has some kind of scale, you can say, well, guess what? I'd like our accountants to be diverse too. And our lawyers should be diverse too. And the people who cater us, right? You have this ability to actually push opportunity to every single level where your business is. We did a doc for uh, HBO, a series uh, called Black and Missing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's streaming actually right this moment. And I had four women of color as my directors for each uh, hour. And people would say all the time, this is not possible. We just can't, the pipeline, we just can't. And, well, my company is tiny and, and I found four women of color to, to be directors. It's doable. So you actually have to push people to say, you can find it, you can fund it, you can commit to it. You can't just talk about it constantly and not do anything. You know, um, over, the, over the course of the, the time we've worked together, there was a point where if you were 
black uh, or you were not white and, and, and you were at the table in a, in a white owned company, um, you, you, you often had to keep your head down to get farther in that company until you were in a position where you could then say, let's do this story. You don't have to ask as much permission for it. Now the world has changed. Now even in mainstream news organizations, uh, we are making efforts at hiring people who are bringing their full authentic selves. They're not faking it like, like I was. When I, when I was coming up in this business, I did everything possible to not make sure people had any sense of what my real identity was so that I could just be like everybody else. Is that change good? I think that change is great. I think it would be amazing if white people also would say, hey, I think we should see more diversity here. That that burden often falls on the people of color in the room. And sometimes it's a little exhausting. Like, mm -hmm. why must you be the one advocating for that? Why shouldn't it be everybody advocating for that? There's lots of data that shows diversity is very good for businesses. We know that. So I, I would say, I think you're seeing change. People are being encouraged to actually be a resource for their organization but I'd like to see it go farther. I would like to see it not just great. You're now around the table. You're now being encouraged to speak, but like, what can you do to now create opportunities for everybody else? And that really is ownership. And that really is an investment in, in equity for the entire community. So that it's great to see you, my friend. Thank you. I've, I uh, really wanted to have this conversation nice with you. Soledad O'Brien is a Very journalist. Great. She's the Thank CEO you. of Soledad O'Brien Productions, the host of Matter of Fact with Soledad O'Brien, which is syndicated in virtually every TV market. You can check your local listings for it.